board. And Gabrielle, would you like to uh, give us a bit of introductory music, please? I'm going to mute all first. She can unmute herself now. I'll start again because I got muted just then. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Well, good morning. Welcome to you all to uh, this online service for Remembrance Sunday. It's good to be gathered to all together. Welcome to you uh, from right across the benefits. And we particularly welcome those uh, who have a particular investment uh, with service personnel this morning. Thank you for uh, your suitable dress and joining us uh, as we remember those uh, who've gone before us, uh, who've fallen in conflict. And we're mindful of the effects that causes to the whole of society uh, and those who still suffer today as a consequence. And I'll be saying some words about that uh, later on. So we come to our opening hymn. We're going to hear uh, S um, Lloyd and Sarah sing, God is our strength and our refuge. Mm -hmm. We cast our mind back to the events of the last week and think of the ways in which we failed to love and serve uh, our loving father. Uh, we think about the state of our world, the uh, activity within it that makes warfare and military service necessary. So let us confess to God the sins and shortcomings of the world, its pride, its selfishness, its greed, its evil divisions and hatreds. Let us confess our share in what is wrong and our failure to seek and establish that peace which God wills for his children. Most merciful God, Father, Father of our Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ. We, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed. Forgive you your sins. Open your eyes to God's truth. Strengthen you to do God's will and give you the joy of his kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Here are our first reading now from the uh, letter to the Thessalonians. The coming of the Lord. Brothers. We do not want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep or to grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. 
We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's own word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left till the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage each other with these words. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Here are reading from the book of Matthew. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. <clears throat> when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. <clears throat> but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. <clears throat> As the bride was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout. Look, here is the bridegroom. <clears throat> come out to meet him. Then all of those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil for your lamps are going out. But the wise replied, no, <clears throat> there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. <clears throat> and while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also saying, I tell you, I do not know you, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Can I just ask you, um, Lorna, to make screen sharing available for me, please, because I'll need to share some music and images a little bit later on. Well, I always struggle with the two minute silence on Remembrance Sunday because, quite frankly, I'm not quite sure what to do with it. Do I replay beaches of Normandy and Flanders in my mind like a graphic film? Do I recall my memories excited by the Falklands conflict of the 1980s. Imagine the return of the wounded, damaged personnel affected by explosion. And we think about war and its deep, long lasting effects, not just of service personnel, but throughout society. So thank you, Lorna. If you can just return to stop the share for the moment and I'll come back on later so that people can don't need to just see me. When we consider um, military service, I wonder how Christians are meant to respond to it. And that's another tension that I think exists for, for many of us. So when we consider the term war, I wonder what thoughts cross our minds. Is it the act of warfare itself? There is a cost of serving in our armed services. I once visited a lady who had married an RAF pilot just days uh, before he was killed uh, in the Battle of Britain. And I became aware of this, this kind of living when I lived in Portsmouth for over a decade with service families. The cost, not so much for our own service personnel who often enjoy the service life, but for those also who are left behind, their families. Families who learn to live as a one parent family for months and months on end, only to find that on return the, of the uh, missing parent, the whole balance of life is thrown out. A parent who has spent months and years being shaped to live in the institution of the military 
trying to fit with the round of schools and clubs and the complex demands of family life. No wonder marital tensions sometimes run high and relationships flounder. The casualties, of course, are the children mainly who will carry that scar for the rest of their lives. My father was part of a service family, the RAF, in the southeast during the Battle of Britain. His education, his life and his whole personality was deeply affected and shaped by his experiences as a child, including once being machine gunned by aircraft on the way home from school. As the years pass since the first commemorations of the World Wars, we have developed new insights into groups that we previously overlooked. The land army, ethnic minorities, the role of animals. Our service men and women who now return very often maimed, physically, sometimes mentally, post-traumatic stress disorder is quite prevalent amongst many who return from some of the dreadful situations they've been in. And they struggle to fit not just into their family, but into the whole of society. As a result, some end up in prison, having failed to reconcile their experience and living with the demands of living as a civilian. With recent fighting in times tied up with highly charged political issues such as Afghanistan and Iraq and Croatia, the issue has become quite politically charged as well. Service personnel face allegations and charges under human rights legislation that they've never had to face before. Veterans of Northern Ireland from a war and a conflict many years ago also face prosecution. Since 1945, the public has also had deeper insight into war as news coverage has been deeper and journalists have been actually present in the front line and images imprint themselves on the mind. Kim Fook, in a well-known photograph of 1972, is shown at nine years of age running naked on a road after being severely burned on her back by a napalm attack. And since the rise of Islamic terror has overspilled from its original centre, we all live in fear of further attacks. We remember the Manchester Arena, London Bridge and particularly France in recent weeks. So here are the less visible victims of war and to some degree so are we all. So how do I react to warfare as a Christian? Not the act of war itself, but the, around it, the armaments industry and the armed services. Surely both of these must be opposed by a true Christian. The call of Jesus to be peacemakers, to refrain from violence, to refrain from resisting evil with evil, has been the key theology underwriting pacifist thought. Jesus yields to the military and doesn't resist them, even though it gets taken, it takes him to his own death. And on the other hand, to revere or celebrate militarism as an absolute good cannot be right. In some church services, I find this unquestionable acceptance that being in the military can only be a good thing problematic. When I was at Theological College, a visiting parish priest talked of his community projects in Hartlepool, which was then struggling in the economic conditions of the 1980s. We do not have dealings with the defence or the gambling industries, he told us emphatically, and I pointed out that my whole career had been based on these two. In the late 80s, at the height of the Cold War, I visited Whale Island just off Portsmouth. I worked for a large defence firm and had a ticket for one of the largest defence exhibitions in the UK, showcasing and selling our amazing UK defence technology to many other nations, albeit some with dubious human rights records and standing across the world. Just the day before, a clergy friend who happened to be the diocesan advisor on social justice and a priest at my church had been part of a protest against that same exhibition. And the question during my time working in the defence industry was put to me several times. How can a Christian justify working in defence? My answer was thought through. It, firstly, the key was in defence. It was there to protect innocent people. That's the basis of our military and our service. The technology that was developed led to advancements in other non-defence areas, especially in the area of medicine. Defence also provides employment, which was a major concern in Portsmouth where I lived as much as it is in Plymouth now. 
in terms of mission two, there was an important point. As a Christian, I had access to employees who were inaccessible to a formal licensed minister. I could represent the gospel and take the good news to everyone I met with. And in fact, I met with other Christians and we formed a Christian fellowship there at the heart of the defence industry, witnessing and praying together for those with whom we worked. And when we look at scripture, how does Jesus and the New Testament church deal with the military and deal with soldiers? At the very heart of our communion service, just after the breaking of the bread before the prayer of humble access, we say the words, Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. And those words are spoken to Jesus by a Roman centurion. The soldiers are told to be lawful. They're told not to oppress people, but they're never told to give up their jobs and they're never criticised for undertaking it. Some of the earliest apostles and martyrs are indeed soldiers. St. George himself was certainly a Roman soldier, but at the same time he was Turkish and probably never came to England. So there is an acceptance of the work of soldiers biblically. So here's the compromise that I've had to learn to live with. Less than perfect, we live in a fallen world. There will indeed be war, Jesus told us there would. And we accept the necessity of the military for protection. We accept that those who enter and serve it are no more hero heroic and no more flawed than any other human being. The need for armed services to exist is in fact a cause to lament and reflect at the state of the fallen world. As I described earlier, the insidious effect of war, its far-reaching consequences into society at every level, and the need for a military are reminders that redemption of the world is needed. We so need the world to be redeemed, and this will only happen by the return of Jesus. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. So as we reflect on this, I'm going to play a short anthem and I'm going to try and show some images. So if you'll bear with me while I do that. Laura, I wonder if you could um, um, stop sharing your screen and allow me to share mine. Thank you. Um, I think you'll need to change it Lorna this the, the script share settings to allow all participants because I still can't share mine thank you just please bear with me people while I try and set this going
We're going to be led in prayer now by Rita. Let us, as your disciples, portray Christianity as a happy way of life, not something that is somber and miserable. Christianity to the ordinary man in the street is sometimes very daunting. Help us as Christians to dispel this myth and welcome all people into the church. The world which we live in seems at times to have lost its way. We argue over small unimportant things. If we as neighbors and friends cannot agree, we should not be surprised when countries go to war. Especially we pray for all those men and women who are fighting for peace. Guard and guide them through these troubled times. Give their families strength and courage to cope. As we prepare to come into your presence on this day of remembering, we seek your blessing for all who are gathered here today. We remember the sacrifices of the past Help us to build a future of justice and peace. May God give peace. God give peace. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you have promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. Many people throughout the world are experiencing very difficult times due to COVID-19. We pray that a solution will soon be found to alleviate much suffering. 
We pray as individuals and through the church that help for the homeless and poor throughout the world be achieved. May God give peace. God give peace. Strengthen Philip, our bishop, Chris, our rector, and all your church in the service of Christ, that those who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Bless and guide Elizabeth, our queen. Give wisdom to all in authority and divide this and every nation in the ways of justice and peace, that men may honor one another and seek the common good. Give guidance to all leaders throughout the world. Help them to make decisions that show compassion to their fellow man. May God give peace. God, God give peace. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Give them the courage and hope in their troubles and bring them joy in your salvation. We think especially of all those on our prayer list who are sick and any known to us personally. Help them to be strong and cope with their problems. May the carers, doctors and nurses be given the strength to carry on their good work. Bless and guide them. Give them understanding and patience. Hear us as we remember those who have died in the faith of Christ. According to your promises, grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. May God give peace. God, God give peace. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of our Son, your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. O oh God of truth and justice, we hold before you those whose memory we cherish and those whose names we will never know. Help us to lift our eyes above the torment of this broken world and grant us the grace to pray for those who wish us harm. As we honour the past, may we put our faith in your future, for you are the source of life and hope, now and forever. Amen. Trusting in the compassion of God, as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Well, just before Lloyd and Sarah give us our next hymn. I'd just like to uh, welcome Merrin, who you'll see has just arrived. She's just waving there. Hello, Merrin. It's great to see you. Merrin's going to uh, play the trumpet for us um, when we come to the act of remembrance. And, and we're very privileged to have her with us. Thank you, Merrin, for making the time. Uh, I think there must have been quite a fight for you today, but I'm so glad that we've, we've won and we've got you. And you're very welcome. We'll perhaps look forward to, to having a few words afterwards. Um, Lloyd and Sarah, please take us away for the healing of the nations. Okay. So let's uh, move to the act of remembrance itself then. Dear friends, we gather on this nearest day to the anniversary of the ending of the Great War. We commemorate those who gave their lives during that war, the Second World War, and all those who have died in conflict since. We acknowledge before God the sinfulness of humanity that breathe the necessity of arms. As we acknowledge our debt to the fallen, we commit ourselves to work for peace, that their sacrifice may not be in vain. So we do sing now, O oh God, our help in ages past. Let us remember before God and commend to his safekeeping those who have died for the, their country in war, those whom we knew 
and whose memory we treasure, and all who have lived and died in the service of the peoples of the world. They shall not grow old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. When you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow, we gave our today. Ever living God, we remember those whom you have gathered from the storm of war into the peace of your presence. May that same peace calm our fears, bring justice to all peoples and establish harmony among the nations. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. That's okay. Let us commit ourselves to responsible living and faithful service. Will you strive for all that makes for peace? We will. Will you seek to heal the wounds of war? We will. 
May God, merciful God, we ex offer to you the fears in us that have not yet been cast out by love. May we accept the hope you have placed in the hearts of all people and live lives of justice, courage and mercy through Jesus Christ, our risen Redeemer. Amen. Will you work for a just future for all humanity? We will. God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, rest and remain on each of you, on your homes, all those you love and all those for whom you pray, this day and in eternity. Amen. Just before we uh, close, I just want to say thank you to all those who've uh, helped put the service uh, together. It's been quite a, a difficult job because, of course, when we planned it originally, we were all going to be in our respective buildings. But it's good to be together. Thank you for being patient over the use of the technology and, and the music that's taken putting together. Thank you, uh, Lorna, for uh, your engineering. Thank you for all the musicians who've contributed uh, to Gabrielle and Lloyd and Sarah. Thank you for those who've read. Thank you, Mary. Merrin. Can we have a round of applause for Merrin, please, I think, because um, uh, Mer Merrin came in sort of fairly min well last minute when I very much doubted she was available and she's been very supportive of, uh, of the parishes. So thank you very much, Merrin. Perhaps you'll hang around afterwards and just let people speak to you because we'd like to hear more about what's going on for you. Are there any, any news that anybody wants to share with us? To unmute and share your news. No, they're, they're the, we need an Anglican feature, don't we, where, it, you know, you have the choice to unmute or just look at the floor or, or look at the ceiling to avoid saying anything. <laughs> well, if there's anything, perhaps you'll share it over uh, over chat afterwards. Let's uh, have our... Anybody, oh, Sorry, Chris, if anybody wants to find the St Dominic one, it's on Tamar Valley Benefits uh, Facebook page and on the St Dominic Church Facebook page. That is our act of remembrance. I'll try and stick it on the website somewhere yeah, as well. I'll send it to you. Oh, brilliant. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> no, only, only just not longer. <laughs> not long ago. That's great. Thank you. We'll look forward to seeing that. Thank you for sorting that out. Thank you for all that you've done to keep things going. Can I say that the, the old Baston one should be on the Gunners Lake Community Matters page that Deb um, led this morning at all put um, links on to both of them as soon as I can on the website but so uh, that's really good and that, that's lovely for Deb because this is her first sort of uh, formal engagement as a, a, a LLM so uh, that's great let's uh, thank you Lloyd and Sarah let's have more beautiful music from you let there be love shared among us let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ Amen, Amen. I think we're going to hear a final piece from Gabriel.